go. Right, so last time that I saw you, we kicked off with, uh, we left off, or we talked off about something like this. And I think I was having a look at this fella, my lad. And, oh, he's been, he's been busy on this one, I tell you. Look at the fella, he's all over the place. Now, the thing about this user that's interesting is this particular user is only supposed to use the computer on Friday evenings, which he has been doing, and the weekends, Saturday, you can see. But you see, here I noticed that this user's been logged in during weekdays, when, in fact, he still hasn't even logged out from that particular session. Um, uh, as you can see that here, he hasn't logged out at all, has he? So, the thing that I'm thinking now, when I see user behavior that's not normal, hang on, we have to just pour ourselves a drink. The thing I'm thinking now is, well, what has that user been up to, and can I find out? So, that's where we're going to move on to in this video. So, we'll clear the screen. You remember that from last time. So, uh, let's find out where we are. Remember that. We're in users, right? And what we want to do is go and have a look in this user's particular account. Um, let's just check where we are again. Right, so we're in there, so let's have a look what he's got in there. Now, you can see, I said I'd talk about this before, you can see, uh, you know, all this extra information. What I actually want to focus on this time is these numbers, because these numbers actually reveal quite a lot more than you might think. Uh, and I guess we'll talk about these numbers too. Any number that's a one basically tells you it's just a file. And any number that's a two tells you that it's a directory, but there's nothing in it. And I'll explain why in a second. Any number above that tells you it's a directory with... Ah, my all. Right, sorry about that. Uh, so where was I? Uh, so any number uh, greater than two tells you it's a directory with that many items minus two in it. So if that says 48, then we should find 46 items in there. And likewise, this one at the top uh, says 17, and we should find 15 items in there. And the reason why you're minus in two is basically because of these first two items. So every directory, you'll always see these two items, even in an empty one. And that's why a number two tells us you've got an empty directory. These two items are just basically um, references or links to... This one is a reference to uh, the parent of the current directory. And this one is actually a reference to itself. So when we see here 17 items, if you count down these lines, you'll see the 17 lines. It's a reference to itself. Um, but the actual only real items are 15. It's these ones, right? So that's what those numbers are all about. And if we look at what I'm particularly interested in is if we look at, sorry, at these two. Now you'll see one of them is a number one which means it's a file. And the other one is a 48, which means it's a directory of 46 items in it. And these numbers here in this column, these tell you the byte size, how many bytes is it. So this is 1.6 kilobytes, and this is about just over half a kilobyte. But in a text um, file, that can contain a lot of information, or indeed even in a binary. But what these basically do is they give you some relative idea of the sizes. Um, I'm going to look at this file in a minute, but before I do, 
uh, I want to show you a, a little trick and you'll notice that as we've been going through these sessions you know I'm continually typing things like LSLAF and clear and you can actually even put semicolon and type two things on the same line but be careful of errors if you get the first one wrong the second one will never complete uh, there you go so um, instead of doing that what I can do actually is I can use the up and down arrows on the keyboard to cycle through the history of the commands I've just been typing. So if I press the up key, I'll see the previous command, including the incorrect one, and the command before that, and the command before that. And if I want to come forward, I can press the down key, and it brings me back forward. This is really useful to stop you from having to keep retyping, especially if you type a really long command. Um, sometimes, you know, I mean, you just get into the habit of typing. I still type, you know, LSA 11 and clear, even though it's probably quicker if I just hit, hit the uh, up and down arrows. But the main reason I really mentioned that just now is because it's connected to what we're looking at here. The reason that we can use that function up, up and down uh, arrows is because all of the commands we type on the command line are stored in the bash history file uh, precisely to allow us to do that to be able to recall previous commands but what that also means is if we look in somebody else's account we can see what commands they've been typing and that's what we're going to do here so this user's got a bash history and he's got 648 bytes in that file he's obviously been up to something and he's also got in this one 48 so this user has been uh, utilizing the command line uh, quite a bit so it's worth finding out what they've been up to so we'll have a look in bash history that's the, the file and we can open a file on the command line just by using the command cat and then put it in code complete with this one batch history just use the tab key and then hit return and now I get to see all of his commands so this is the opposite order from the last command that we looked at before so in this case the ones at the top are the oldest ones and the ones at the bottom are the most recent so clearly this user has been looking around and it's been deleting some stuff CD applications listing. This user's been copying by the look of it. iMovie uh, to the Steam folder. Steam's a games platform, you lot probably know better than I do. Um, and then we've got some changing of permissions of a file called start command. Let's go and have a look at, uh, sorry, wrong command. Um, let's go and have a look at the bash sessions. Um, ooh, what have I done wrong there? Oh, I've got cat instead of CD, that's how I see. Right. Um, now, you can't quite see all this very well in this restricted view. In fact, if we make it smaller, it might just help a bit. Let's get rid of that. Right, that's probably too small to read, but uh, I just wanted you to be able to see what's actually in this folder or this directory. You can see it's a list of all the sessions, and all this has been going on at pretty much the same time, you know, a very short space of time on the same session. Um, it was the 24th of April, pretty much all of this stuff. What hopefully you get the idea from here is that, you know, in the bash history file that we looked at, the first one, that's the most recent use. And in that file, we can see the commands, but we couldn't actually see the times when they were run. Let's go back out and I want to show you one last trick, an important trick. I said that I, I wanted to go and have a look at what he was doing. I'm just going to make this big again. Bear with me while I resize it for you. 
Okay. Um, I said I wanted to go and have a look at a bit further at what it's doing. And if I look at his other listings, um, his other directories, I can see his desktop folder has got nine items in it, uh, minus the two uh, reference folder references. I mean, there's seven things in his desktop, and it's always worth having a look at um, what's on that desktop because that's where a lot of people tend to just you know throw their temporary files and stuff and of course I can see all the dates on these were last modified as well so if that happened to coincide with a Tuesday um, or a Friday or a day that the user is not supposed to be working on the computer then you know you'd want to go and have a look in that so let's just try and have a look in his desktop shall we and you'll see that of course what happens is permission denied I can't actually get in there now if I'm an administrator which I am and that's why we in a previous video we wanted to find out if the user was an administrator or the user whose password you've got is an administrator then you can invoke administrator privileges by doing this sudo command before the command that you actually want to invoke now normally that will work that will get you in but in this case because it's actually protected um, protected within the home directory of the other user even sudo won't get you in so if I do this you'll see I'm still just back in the root of his directory I can't get into his private private folders however if I do this sudo su I drop into you'll see the shell command has changed now I drop into what they call root mode or the root level I'm just going to move this up and once I'm a, on some root then I can do whatever I like so um, now watch MBP desktop I'm spelling that right yes I am where am I Da -da I'm there what's in his desktop then let's have a look all right there's the nine items nine minus two is seven DS store and localized they're just rubbish um, right he's got some movies in there he's got Roblox app in there there's that unturned app that's been I think the culprit of all those bash commands and he's got some number stuff all right so I can also see when these were last mod modified okay I'll leave it there um, so hopefully you've got some idea how you can you know find out what users have been doing and when they've been doing it by looking at their bash history or dropping into root and snooping around the rest of their account um, I'll just finish off by pointing out that you know when you're done with your session you don't really want to be leaving your command line in root so it's always good practice to go log out a hey, sorry good practice to go exit when you're in root and equally you don't want to leave your command line that'll take you back to where you were before so if I do this you'll see I'm back in his users MB Kim um, you want to also do log out just to end your session and of course you'll notice it's saving your history your own history is there which you could of course delete if you didn't want anybody else snooping around and finding your bash history and on that note I'll see you next time hope you enjoyed it ta -da.